It's so hard when someone asks something of us that we don't have the capacity to give or maybe even don't want to give, but we don't want to hurt their feelings or disappoint them. So we end up going along with it or saying yes to it or obliging it and then end up feeling stressed or overwhelmed or bitter or resentful or taken advantage of or unappreciated. But we don't want to feel any of those things. So how do we do it? How do we not upset someone and at the same time take care of ourselves and our own limits and our own boundaries and our own wellness? This is what we are going to talk about today. And people pleasers, whether you identify yourself as one or not, this is going to be for you and it's going to help a lot. I'm going to teach you both how to take care of other people, be there for other people and preserve and protect your relationships while also being there for yourself, taking care of yourself and preserving and protecting your relationship with yourself and your mental health and well-being. But first, if you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second and introduce yourself in the comment section below. Back again. Always good to have you. Special shout out to my shifters. Really glad that you're here. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. The button's about right down there. And either way, my name is Julia Christina, and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, a speaker, and an author, and the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, where we are taking this work to the next level, and you're being guided and supported along the whole way. You can get more information about The Shift Society in the description below. I help heart-centered humans think better, feel better, and show up better so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. So what do you do? I'm going to tell you a story about Lisa. Now, Lisa's birthday was coming up on the weekend, on the Saturday, but on the Sunday, she had planned to throw a big party for herself and invite a bunch of her friends. And now the other side part is that Lisa hadn't had a party for herself or hosted a big event at her house for a really long time. And so she knew that she needed time and space to get prepared, to run the errands, to set things up, to make things the way that she wanted to make them. Because first of all, having a lot of people at your house can feel overwhelming. And second of all, she wanted to make it really nice. And so she wanted the time to be able to set things up for that, which means that she had set aside the day before the entire Saturday to do those things, run the errands, do the setup, deal with the things, get everything organized and sorted. And she hadn't made any other plans that day because she wanted to do this planning and preparing and setting up in a way that wouldn't feel stressful and overwhelming. Like she was rushing around and trying to fit all these things in to not very much time. So she had intentionally set that day aside. But then her daughter messaged her and said, it's your birthday Saturday. I want the day. I want to do something with you and I want you for the day. And immediately Lisa started to feel stressed. She started to feel anxious because she's like, oh my gosh, I had set aside this day to prepare for this party. And now my daughter wants to spend all this time with me, which is not a bad thing, but it's feeling stressful. It's feeling overwhelming. I don't know what to do because I need to prepare for the party, but I also don't want to disappoint her. And she was starting to even feel bitter and resentful and angry under the surface towards her daughter for putting her in that position, for putting that stress on her to have to make that decision on how to get all of that done and still do what her daughter wanted to do. And then she felt like a terrible person for even starting to feel resentful for the fact that her grown-up daughter wanted to spend time with her and thought she should be feeling grateful for that. So all of these feelings, all of these things, all of this stuff coming up, she was feeling stressed, she was overwhelmed. She was like, okay, well, maybe I could just give my daughter a couple hours and we could just go and do something for a little bit. And, you know, then I could get the rest of the stuff done, even though she knew that even that couple hours would take away from the time she needed to prepare and it would make her stressed out the rest of the day. So if you are sitting there and you're like, well, what's the other option, Julia? She has to do it for her daughter. She has to 
spend the time with her daughter. Her daughter wants that. She'd be hurt if she didn't. But here's the thing. She doesn't have to. And it doesn't make her a bad or difficult or wrong or ungrateful person if she doesn't. She is allowed to value her own well-being, her own wellness, her own stress levels, as much as she is allowed to value her relationship with her daughter. And here's the other thing. If she goes along with this decision to spend a few hours with her daughter, even though her daughter wants the whole day, her daughter's going to be somewhat disappointed that she can't spend the whole day with her. And then even while she's with her daughter, she knew that she would be feeling stressed. She would be feeling distracted. She'd be watching the clock, trying to make sure that she'd still have enough time to get everything done. And she might even be feeling a little bit angry or resentful towards her daughter for putting her in this position, putting her in this position, which her daughter didn't more on that in a minute, but for putting her in this position where now she has to be stressed the rest of the day, which then wouldn't even be good for the relationship in the first place. And so saying to herself that I can't disappoint my daughter, so I'm going to sacrifice my well-being for this is not actually good for the relationship. So what should she do instead? Well, the first thing is to really value her well-being. And for all of us who tend to be people pleasers, we tend to value the well-being of others and the needs of others and the preferences of others and the requests of others and the demands of others and the expectations of others more than we do our own well-being. And we tell ourselves, well, I can just do this. It's not that big of a deal. I can just finish my stuff later or I can just squeeze it in or I can just take this on. I don't want to hurt them. I don't want to disappoint them. I don't want to upset them. Right. And so then we are doing these things at our own expense. And then again, that extra layer, we often then do do them feeling angry or resentful or stressed or, or, uh, you know, creating that kind of distance in the relationship because we're kind of bitter towards the person, which isn't actually the kind thing to do if you think about it. So what is Lisa's other option that would be both preserving and respecting of her relationship with her daughter and also preserving and respecting her own mental health and well-being. She could simply be honest with her daughter and center the quality of the relationship in that honesty. Saying something to her daughter like, I already have the full day planned with everything I need to do to get ready for the party. I'm already feeling a bit stressed and anxious about everything that I have to do. And so trying to add another commitment to the day feels like too much. And if we spent some time together and went and did something for a few hours, I wouldn't be able to give you my full, relaxed, present, happy self. I would be distracted. I would be feeling stressed. I would be feeling overwhelmed. I would be watching the clock. And I don't want our time together to be kind of laced with that tension. But I do really want to see you what other day would work for you. Do you see what we did there? We honored the relationship. We respected the person in their want or their need and also honored ourselves and respected and took care of ourselves in that moment. Now, it doesn't mean that her daughter isn't going to be a little bit put off, isn't going to be a little bit salty, isn't going to be a bit disappointed, or maybe even a little hurt that her mom isn't able to just drop everything for her. But if she is any kind of reasonable adult that is able to think rationally through things, after that little bit of kind of hurt or disappointment to subside, she's going to be able to take a step back and be like, you know what? That's not unreasonable. That's fair. My mom is not being selfish. She's not trying to push me away. She's not saying that her party planning is more important than me. She's saying that this is something that's important to her and also wanting to have a good time with me is important to her. And those two things can't exist at the same time. The key piece in this that you are going to need in order to be taking care of yourself, setting limits for yourself. You're not putting boundaries on others. You're putting boundaries in for yourself when you need to. The key thing is that you need to believe that your wants, your needs, your preferences, and your well-being counts too. 
that that is important. And nobody else is going to take care of that for you. Nobody else is going to regulate you for you. Nobody else is going to set your boundaries for you, the boundaries that you need to be setting for yourself in order to be taking good care of yourself. So it is your job and your responsibility to do that. And so back to what I was saying before about her daughter putting her in this awkward uncomfortable position, her daughter didn't do anything wrong. Her daughter made a request. And the only thing that feels tense about her daughter making that request is the thought that I have to acquiesce. I have to give in. I have to do what they want. I have to set myself aside. I have to put undue stress and overwhelm on myself so that I don't disappoint them. Right? That is what is putting us into that state of tension. That is make it, what is making us feel put on. It's not them. It's us. It's our thoughts about it. But as soon as we take a step back and we have the thought that I love that my daughter wants to spend time with me, I really like spending time with her too, but this weekend, it's going to be too much for me. It's going to create a lot of stress and overwhelm, and I just don't want to feel that. And I need to take care of myself in that, so I am going to offer an alternative and really hope that she understands. I was having this conversation with some people about this particular way of dealing with stuff like this. And they said, well, what I normally do is I try to over-explain myself. I try to over-explain my reasons for my boundaries or why I can't do something or why something isn't going to work for me. And I go on and on and on about it. And I said to them, who are you trying to convince that your boundary or what you need to do for yourself or what you are not are or are not available for is okay? Are you trying to convince them? Or are you trying to convince yourself? And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a lot harder to convince someone else or to manage somebody else's thoughts than it's going to be to manage your own. So if you feel like you are worthy of taking care of yourself, if you feel like you are worthy of considering and caring for your mental health and your well-being, then it's going to make it a lot less likely that you are going to insist or struggle or push or try or get anxious about whether or not somebody else does. This doesn't mean that we're callous and we're like, this is what I need to do for me. Deal with it. And if you don't like it, that's your problem. That's not centering the relationship. Although you are allowed to say, you know what, this is what I need to do with me for me. And you take care of your thoughts about that. You can absolutely do that. It just might not be great for the relationship. But you have to first believe that you deserve wellness and that you deserve to do what you need to do to take care of that wellness. It doesn't mean that anytime we feel kind of put out by someone's request from us that we say, no, that's going to cause some stress or that's going to not be convenient for me or that's going to be difficult for me. It doesn't mean they automatically say no. Sometimes we're like, you know what? I am going to take this one for the team. I am going to do this. I am going to inconvenience myself or put myself out there or take a little bit more on or maybe even cause some extra stress for myself, maybe not debilitating stress, but I'm going to create some extra stress for myself because I want to be there for this person in that way. That is not people pleasing. If you are going into it feeling good about your decision, you like your reasons for doing it, then you're not going in feeling bitter and resentful. How you know you're people pleasing is if you are saying yes to something that you really want to say no to and you're going into doing it anyways and you feel kind of bitter or resentful or overwhelmed or unappreciated or taken advantage of or taken for granted because you're not getting back from them what you want to get back from them, then you know you're in people pleasing. If you are going about it, having cleaned up your thoughts about it, and you're going into it feeling good about it, then sometimes we do that. But you get to really decide when it's time to go with it, change it, adjust it, and when it's time to set the boundary for yourself, set the parameter, communicate your limit. There is a time and place for each. If you want to feel better about yourself and really believe that you deserve wellness, that you deserve to feel good, that you deserve and it's okay to have limits and boundaries and take care of yourself, that needs to start with trusting yourself, with building that foundational relationship with yourself that comes from self-trust. 
I have a guide for you. It's the simple steps of self-trust. It's going to walk you through some written exercises that is going to really help you do that and get that clarity and start creating that base of self-trust, which then leads to self-love. Always good to have you here. Let me know what connected with you in the comment section below. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Take good care of those around you. Bye for now.